You're welcome back. Uh, we're being joined by Nick Agule, like I said, and we're going to be talking about the housing problems in Nigeria and how to solve them. We have a very short time to discuss this. Uh, I'd like to say welcome to Nick Agule. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, good morning to our viewers. Mm. Okay, uh, Nigeria is facing a lot of problems, but one of the very critical ones is housing. Because apart from food, the next thing is housing, and then you're talking about uh, clothing, uh, so in, in that order. And now housing, we seem to have a deficit in housing. It's already a problem. How do we solve that? That's the question, and maybe the only question we're asking on this segment like right now. Do you have solutions to it? Yes, thank you very much. And there is no doubt that Nigeria has a huge housing deficit. If you look at uh, the people are living more or less in squalor in the most parts. And this pro problem has persisted for a very long time. And there are all sorts of teaching problems uh, arising from uh, land acquisition, uh, the high cost of uh, building materials as most of them are imported, and all sorts of uh, racketeering and sharp practices that exist in the sector. All these don't augur well for investments in the sector. And what we have been witnessing so far is Nigerians are not living in different conditions. And you rightly said so because uh, the basic physiological needs are food, shelter, and clothing. And in Nigeria, food is also a problem. You know? So, in answer to your question directly, what can be done? What needs to be done will have to be a multi level approach. The government has to do its own part. The investing community, the private sector, have to do their own part. <clears throat> and those who want to either rent houses or buy houses have to do their own part. Now, if we look at the side of the government, we need the government to be an enabler. The government needs to be uh, a, the body that ensures that land acquisition is seamless, that ensures that uh, people who want to invest in housing don't have any stumbling blocks to do that, and there is free flow of investment in the sector, either uh, domestically or foreign. So far, we have some of the state governments who have been able to digitalize uh, the land acquisition and administration processes. And we need more state governments to do that because by the Land Use Act, the uh, title in land in Nigeria, across Nigeria, rests with state governments. And so all state governments in Nigeria need to upgrade to digital platforms in terms of land administration to make it easy for people to acquire title to make it easy for people to search for title to land so that this will encourage people to come into the sector because right now investors are not coming because one of the easiest places where you can be scammed is in the housing sector either uh, a piece of land has been sold to multiple buyers or a piece of uh, property has been sold to multiple buyers, it's very difficult to determine the exact ownership of landed property, either the land or the houses that stand on them. So that is for the state government. And also, <coughs> the federal government has to initiate policy. And this is where fiscal policy and monetary policy comes into play. Nigeria as we have today, is suffering what we call stagflation, meaning there is low output. And that low output is resulting in 
high unemployment. And that high unemployment resultant from low output is bringing about a hyperinflation. And so in an inflationary uh, regime, it becomes very difficult for consumers to acquire goods and property. <laughs> because if you save to buy a, a, a landed property, it, it is in no time you will see that the price has escalated beyond the point at which you have saved. Fiscal and monetary policy that will make it possible for the economy to grow. Because it is only a growing economy that will generate effective demand for housing. Also, as part of a monetary policy at the federal level, loans, mortgage loans, should be made cheaply available to buyers. In other crimes, once a graduate leaves school, he learns a job. And after he learns a job, on the basis of the job that he has, he has landed, he is able to assess a mortgage loan at very cheap interest rate. The mortgage loan will usually be at anything at 5% interest rate or below it. And with that, this young graduate is able to buy a house. <laughs> that means demand for housing becomes high and investors are happy and they come and start investing to build more houses since graduates and those who are in employment are, are buying these houses. And they're not buying these houses with their own cash. They are buying their houses because the banking system is the one that is paying for these houses. And now uh, these workers now will be paying this mortgage, repaying the mortgage from their salaries. And now the advantage here is that instead of paying rent, they are now repaying for their houses Why they live in those houses. Mm. So after 20, 25, 30 years, they finish paying the mortgage and the house belongs to them in their retirement. So they don't have a landlord in their retirement to be breathing down their neck. Hmm. Now, you also uh, discover that if these young graduates and other employees did not have access to cheap mortgage, as, it, as is the case in Nigeria, they don't have adequate housing. So they end up either squatting with colleagues or staying in some sort of squalor. And that then means they will be paying rent. You can pay rent for 20 years to a landlord and not even a window on that house belongs to you. So you will go into retirement without a house and continue to live in squalor until your death, which is very painful. So monetary policy by the government must support this. The idea that the central bank continuously goes into the monetary policy committee meeting and comes up with increases in interest rate is not supporting growth in the Nigerian economy. It's killing growth in the Nigerian economy. The Nigerian economy is not suffering from inflation. It's suffering from taxation. When it is taxation, increases in interest rate are no longer the infrastructure. Like now, I am in Makodi. I am on my way to Abuja. I am going to drive. I just stopped to take this interview. It's going to take me about five hours to drive from here to Abuja. So if I were to go to Abuja and come back, it will take me 10 hours on the road. Whereas if the government makes it possible for rail infrastructure to be built by the private sector, a fast train from this Makodi to Abuja will be just one hour. I will leave the center of Makodi. I'll be at the center of Abuja. That will make it possible for me to live in Makodi and work in Abuja. I go to work one hour to Abuja. After work, I enter a train one hour. I'm back here in, uh, in Makodi. Where housing will be cheaper. I'm any salaries of Abuja paying housing cheaper in Makodi. So I have better demand. And, and, and investors will see that and they will build the houses as government is opening up the roads, the rail, and the water transportation networks across the country. 
So there's a lot that the government will have to do. The same thing comes to the investors. The investors in housing, right now, you will see that it is more about making money than delivering the service. Mm. Investors in housing have to understand that the, 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 the image in the housing sector is very bad. Because like I said earlier, uh, housing is one sector of the Nigerian economy where you can easily be scammed. And people who are operating by building and selling or letting out uh, houses have to understand that they need to focus on providing quality service, which will attract people to come and invest in the housing. It is when people now know that if I buy a piece of land, if I buy a house, it's going to be legitimate. Otherwise, those who are afraid to come into the sector will not come in to boost the growth in that sector. And, and there is something there for the government to do as well, because, you know, a government should be there to be an enabler of business. And if government is seeing that there's all sorts of racketeering in the housing sector, it behoves on the government to take decisive action to ensure that those who are found wanting as operators in the sector are brought to book to sanitize the, the sector. Coming to the, to the consumer themselves, those who are buying houses, you know, this is one of the areas that has brought about a lot of corruption in Nigeria. Because the interest rates are very high. People cannot access cheap credit to buy houses. Uh, uh, workers are now having to carry out all sorts of corrupt uh, practices to try and raise money to go and buy housing in cash. So you have to raise your 10 million, your 20 million, your 50, your 100 million, depending on the location you want to buy the housing, in cash so that you go and buy uh, a house. And what we're saying here is that if government takes the necessary steps, then you will discover that the consumers of the housing sector will now no longer be pushed to engage in corrupt practices to buy houses. They will be able to buy houses on mortgages, live in their houses, pay off their houses, and live in their houses in retirement. And when they are no more, their families inherit these assets and continue either living there, renting it out, or selling it. So there is, this is a multi-level approach to the housing uh, situation in Nigeria. And before, the last point I want to make here is that another issue with housing in Nigeria is that if you go to cities like Abuja, where I'm heading to right now, majority of houses in the, in the city center of Abuja are empty. And this is an area that the government must take decisive action. You cannot be a government and have people living homelessly and then have houses that are being occupied by cockroaches and rats and you are not doing anything about it. Government must take decisive action to say if a house remains unoccupied, perhaps for a period of say three or max six months, the government will take that building and give it out as social housing, as part of social housing. And if government takes that step, the landlords of those houses that are lying empty all over the country will know that they will either put human beings in those houses or they are going to lose those houses to the social uh, housing. housing scheme. And the other thing you will see is that there are other building uh, projects in all our cities. You will see this building project. They have raised the structure and then they have abandoned it. Year in, year out, year in, year out, you are seeing that structure there. Nobody is completing it. Nobody is finishing it. The land upon which the, the, the structure is standing is occupied, not available to any other developer. That is another area where the government must take decisive action. If you buy a piece of land and you are not able to develop it, say, in a period of between six to one year, you must give up that piece of land to somebody else who will develop it. If you have occupied a piece of land 
with an uncompleted structure. You either finish up that structure and let human beings start living in that, uh, that building or you lose it. And government can hand over such structures to investors who will finish it up and give it to human beings to occupy and the former owners can be paid off a bit of money for okay. their efforts. So this, this house levels, but government is the one that must be in the lead. Because okay. Nigerians, like I said earlier, are living in squalor. If you compare the way we are living, in, the environment we are living, okay. our neighborhoods, and what people elsewhere are living. All right. And, you know, uh, elsewhere, even in the developed world, like in the United Kingdom, you will see that government is like a father. Mm. When a family falls on hard times and there is unemployment in the family, the government provides social housing. They call it council housing. Mm. Government provides council housing to that family. Okay. So that the family will not be pushed to the streets. Mm. Yes. Uh, okay. So the government's role is very strong here. Yeah. yeah. The government needs to sit up, and uh, that's the whole uh, crux of the matter, so that the investors will be encouraged, the people who are uh, the consumers will be encouraged, and everybody will be better for it. We'd like to thank you, uh, Nick, uh, for your time this morning, even though you are in a hurry to get to Abuja. Safe journey to Abuja. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I wish all our viewers a happy day. All right, you too. Okay, I've been talking with Nick Agule, a social commentator, and uh, we were talking about the problem of housing in Nigeria. We're going to follow up that uh, same topic by looking at the real estate sector. We're zeroing in on that. We'll take a short break now, and we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us.